Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Here's how the third economic impact payment is different from earlier payments. COVID Tax Tip 2021-44, April 6, 2021. The third economic impact payment, or EIP-3, is different from the first and second payments in several ways. So note we are on round three, EIP-3, at this point in time. But the EIP-3 is a little bit different than round one and two. So let's go through some of those differences. The third economic impact payment is an advance payment of the 2021 recovery rebate credit. That's different from the first rounds. Remember the first two rounds, you can think of them as advance payments of the recovery rebate credit for the 2020 tax return, meaning those two went out based on prior year information if the IRS had that information, which would include 2019 tax return, possibly 2018 tax return, possibly a tool that was used in order to give the IRS information if a tax return wasn't filed or social security payments. But if there was a problem, then the remedy to the problem for EIP-1 and EIP-2 is to file the 2020 tax return and then claim the recovery rebate credit, which then will shore up the difference between what you should have got based on the credit and the prepayment that went out. The third economic impact payment, because it's went out at a later point in time, is not in the same kind of category. It's not tied to a prepayment for 2020, but rather uses 2020 as basically the basis on which the prepayment goes out, it will then be thought of as being tied to the 2021 tax return. So the third one that goes out, they will base it on 2020 taxes if they have been filed. If not, they will base it on 2019 taxes, but you don't need to do anything in particular when filing 2019 or 2020 because they're just going to take that information, pick up the, the what they need, which is basically the yourself, your dependents, your income level to see if there's any phase outs, then send out the prepayment. If there are any problems with the prepayment, it will then be remedied in the tax filing of 2021, you would think, in a similar fashion as the first two economic pay impact payments are remedied now with the recovery rebate credit that is happening uh, in the 2020 tax return. Now note that because it's the beginning of the year, this third economic impact payment is in the beginning of the year, then hopefully they'll have other type of remedies if there's any substantial problems before having to file the tax return related to 2021. But the concept is the same. It's a prepayment of the recovery rebate credit, you would think, that would be tied to 2021, just like the first two were prepayments of basically the credit that would be tied to the 2020 tax return. If there are any problems, for example, with the payment due to AGI limitations and they based it on 2019 because 2020 was not filed, then you may be able to remedy that by filing the 2020 tax return and they should be able to kind of shore that problem up uh, as well. So let's keep on going here. The two earlier payments are advanced payments of the 2020 recovery rebate credit. Eligible people who didn't get a first and second economic impact payment or get less than the full amounts may be eligible to claim the 2020 recovery rebate credit and must file a 2020 tax return even if they don't usually file a tax return. The third economic impact payment will be larger for most eligible people. Eligible, so that's the other difference, of course. The third one's a little bit larger here, and um, there's differences in terms of the de dependents, how it's going to be impacting potential dependents. So eligible individuals who filed a joint tax return will receive up to $2,800, and that you could think of it basically as the $1,400 per person, per like tax number or social security number, if married then, of course, doubling that, $2,800. And all other eligible individuals will receive up to $1,400. Those with qualifying dependents on their tax return will receive up to $1,400 per qualifying dependent. This is a big change because the first one that went out actually had a different dollar amount for the dependents. And both round one and round two had another restriction, meaning the dependent had to be a qualifying child with one of those conditions being that they were under 17. That condition is no longer there, so that that's going to make it usually a lot easier just to distribute the payments because anybody with a social security number, if they're a dependent, then you would think that you'd have a payment related to them. It can also cause a little bit of confusion 
with regards to the prior payments and your and your ability to be claiming someone as a dependent and then the current economic impact payments and whether someone you know claiming would be a dependent that would be getting the payment or not but in general you would think that that would be an easier situation and you would think it would not lead to people trying to distort their filing status as to whether they should be a dependent claimed as a dependent or not by um, whether or not they would be getting the payment based on whether they be a dependent or not so it should be a little bit easier in that format so more people qualify as dependents unlike the first two payments the third payment is not restricted to children under 17. huge difference that means if you're a college student or something like that then you may not get the benefit yourself because if you're claimed as a dependent by a parent for example if you're over 17 going to college or if you're if you have parents uh, that are claimed as a dependent or something like that then uh, for example the college student obviously wouldn't get the economic impact payment if they're claimed as a dependent but at least someone does right the parents would get the benefit in that case in that instance whereas under the first two if you were say a student over 17 going to, to school and you were claimed on your parents uh, tax return as a dependent still then they wouldn't um, qualify so now they now they do and you don't have as much pressure for that student to been, then say hey maybe I should you know file my own tax just to, just because of this you know payment which could distort you know things in some way so it should be easier in that way unlike the first two payments the third payment is not restricted to children under 17 eligible families will get a payment for all qualifying dependents claimed on their return this may include older relatives like college students adults with disabilities parents and grandparents income phase out amounts are different for the third payment taxpayers will not receive a third payment if their adjusted gross income exceeds now note that these are a little bit lower so the income phase outs are actually a little bit lower than the first couple so if you had 160,000 or more if married filing jointly then you wouldn't have uh, any of the economic impact payment if you're 120 if filing head of household if your income level is above 120 then you wouldn't get any payments at that point 80,000 for eligible individuals using either filing statuses such as single filers and married filing separately so no no payment if you're above that threshold and i think those are the end thresholds like where you wouldn't get any of the payment but the phase outs are quite quick so like i think the single phase out was like seventy-five thousand. it starts to phase out to eighty thousand. it's gone so you don't get it at that point so this means that some people won't be eligible for the third payment even if they received first or second EIPs, economic impact payments, or are eligible for a 2020 recovery rebate credit. Some people may be eligible for a supplemental payment. The amount of the third payment is based on the taxpayer's latest processed tax return from, the two, from either 2020 or 2019. If the taxpayer's 2020 return hasn't been processed, the IRS used the 2019 tax return information to calculate the third payment. So the third payment is a prepayment, you can think of, of your 2021 taxes, which would be filed in 2022. That's way off. They're using the, the information from the prior tax return, 2020 if filed, if not 2019 to issue the prepayment that's going to be for the third round that will be tied to the 2021 taxes in the form of the recovery rebate credit prepayment of the recovery rebate credit which would then be filed that tax return will be filed in 2022 so if the third payment is based on 2019 return and is less than the full amount the taxpayer may qualify for a supplemental payment after their 2020 return is processed, the IRS will automatically reevaluate their eligibility using the 2020 information. If they're entitled to a larger payment, the IRS will issue a supplemental payment for the additional amount. Now, this is the situation we were talking about where we're saying, you know, this third economic impact payment is tied to 2021 tax return. And so you would think the ultimate remedy at the end of the day or at the end of the year or whatnot would be to file a 2021 tax return in 2022 but that's way off to do that so obviously they need some remedies before that point in time because the idea is to get the money out now so to get the money out now they're basing it on 2019 information so it's a prepayment the third round is a prepayment of 2021 but if you haven't filed 2020 taxes yet if you file 2020 they're going to base base it on 
the prepayment on 2020 because that's what they have. If you haven't filed 2020, like many have not, they will base it on 2019. Now, what if there's a problem? Typical problem would look something like this that you can predict. Well, there's an income level that's going to be taking uh, place here. So if you base my payment on 2019, then it's possible that I did a lot better in 2019 because that was before the whole pandemic thing that happened. And my income level would be such that maybe I don't qualify for the payment in 2019. But in 2020, circumstances have now changed. Possibly, for example, income levels go way down. <laughs> and, and then in that case, you would qualify. And so if you hadn't filed the 2020 tax return and they base it on your 2019 tax return, it could quite well be that they don't, you wouldn't qualify, whereas you would have if they based it on 2020. So what do you do about that situation? Do I have to wait until the end of the year and file my tax return for 2021 in order to get the recovery rebate credit for the payment that's supposed to be an economic impact payment to stimulate the economy now? No. They're trying to say, hey, look, just file. If that happens, File 2020 tax return. When you file the 2020 tax return, you're not doing anything special related to the EIP-3. You might have to do something special related to EIP-1 and 2, meaning uh, file for the recovery rebate credit in order to shore up any problems with, with the 1 and 2 payments that could have had an issue. But with regard to the third one, you just want to file it so that the IRS then has that added information, such as your income level being below a certain threshold or your dependents possibly being different than they were in 2019. Then the government should be able to automatically pick that up without, without you, you know, doing anything except filing the tax return, at least related to the third payment, the third EIP, and then say, oh, now they're below the threshold or, oh, they have this different circumstance. And so therefore, we're going to shore up and give them the difference based on this prepayment for 2020 even though ultimately once again it's going to be tied to the 2021 tax return so they are going to try to shore things up and not wait till the end of the year in some circumstances you would think this circumstance the agi limitation would be one of the most common problems that they are going to try to handle kind of automatically so once again, if the third payment is based on 2019 return and is less than the full amount, the taxpayer may qualify for a supplemental payment. After the 2020 return is processed, the IRS will automatically reevaluate their eligibility using the 2020 information. If they're entitled to a larger payment, the IRS will issue a supplemental payment for the additional amount. Changes to earlier eligibility requirements. For taxpayers who file jointly and only one individual has a valid SSN social security number, the spouse with a valid social security number will receive up to a $1,400 third payment and up to $1,400 for each qualifying dependent claimed on their 2020 tax return. For taxpayers who, didn't, who don't have a valid social security number but have a qualifying dependent who has an, an SSN social security number, they will only receive up to $1,400 for a qualifying dependent claimed on their return only if they meet all other eligibility and income requirements. So typically they're trying to give out the payment. You can kind of think of it as, as going out to everybody with basically a valid number, valid social security number. So if either spouse was an, an active member of the U.S. Armed Forces at any time during the taxable year, only the spouse needs to have a valid Social Security number for a couple to receive up to $2,800 for themselves plus up to $1,400 for each qualifying dependent. So possible exception there for the U.S. Armed Forces. So once again, if their spouse... Uh, was an active member of the U.S. Armed Forces at any time during taxable year, only one spouse needs to have a valid Social Security number for the couple to receive up to $2,800 for themselves plus up to $1,400 for each qualifying dependent. So that could be an exception for the military. Thanks for your service if that has applicable to you. So if married taxpayers filing jointly did not receive one or both of the first two economic impact payments because one spouse didn't have a social security number valid for employment, uh, they may be eligible to claim a 2020 recovery rebate credit on their 2020 tax return for the spouse with the social security uh, number valid for employment. 